To God be the glory in Jesus' mighty name. I love you all so very much. You all are beautiful. Amazing you are. And I trust the Lord that you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend so far. To God be the glory. So I'm just going to get right into it because I believe this is a, an answer to someone's question out there. And it's a place where you have been asking the Lord, why would you allow my kingdom spouse to be with somebody, you know, to, to be with someone else at this point in time? So it's, it's a place where the Lord has revealed to you that this person is whom I have ordained for you. But the truth of it is, the person that God ordained for you is actually in a relationship. <laughs> Do you see the beauty of that? Yeah. So God highlighted and he said, yeah, that person is your husband. That person is your wife. So what I'm basically doing in this hour is basically helping you to understand that I've pointed out that person to you. But you're like, Lord, why, why would you give me somebody who is already in a relationship? This is the mystery of the Lord. Because majority of the time, we can tend to focus on the other person, not understanding what God is intending to do with our own lives. Now, I want to use this as a disclaimer, because some people, when the Lord basically reveals this to them, the first thing that they are doing is, Father, get that person out of that relationship quick and fast. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't, don't do that, uh, you know, in that moment in time. No, 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 no. Not immediately that you have to pray that prayer if the Lord is not leading you to do so. Because you can be praying that prayer out of your own motives. You can be praying that prayer just because you want to settle down and get married and all of those things. Do you see that? Because sometimes the root of such kind of prayers can be witchcraft because... And the reason why I said because is because is, is why a lot of people, you know, when things like that are happening, we, we need to we need to have a kind of a habit of asking the Lord questions. Lord, why is this happening? Why this way? What is the reason why you orchestrated things in this way? And by the time you begin to ask the right questions, do you see? You begin to get the right answers. The Bible tells us. In the book of James, it says you have not because you ask not. Yes. And when you ask, what did he say? He says you are asking with the wrong motive. So you're asking the Lord to basically get that person out of that relationship. And why are you asking the Lord? Because of your own motive. Can we read it together? James chapter 4. It says, ye lost and have not, ye kill, and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war. Yet ye have not, because ye ask not. And it says, ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. So you can see that a lot of people, the reason why they are basically praying this kind of prayer is to satisfy their own lust for marriage. Idolatry. Can you see? Idolatry. Yeah, marriage can be an idolatry. You can make your spouse to be an idol. Do you know that in itself? So now we have to approach the throne of grace in order to obtain mercy and find grace. Father, you've brought me here. Now the person, the man you've given me, the woman you've given me is in a relationship. What have we got here? <laughs> Why am I here in the first place? I am glad you asked that question because we're about to look at the scripture together. We're going to have a conversation today and we're going to look at the scripture as we go along in this conversation. Now, I want us to look at a man in the Bible. Yeah, his name is called uh, David. Yeah, David. And um, I remember in the scripture, right? Because David, when he was with Saul, he was given a wife, Michal. I, I hope a lot of people are basically understanding that dimension of that word. Yeah, he was given Michal. And Michal was an amazing woman, according to what the Bible was basically declaring. And what happened? It was a place where Michal helped David to escape. But nothing was heard of Michal anymore. So now you can see that the next time we see Michal appear onto the scene, it was in what? It was in the book of 2 Samuel and chapter what? And chapter 3. And what is Michal doing there in 2 Samuel chapter 3? We see it very clearly that the reason why Michal came onto the scene again, that she was already with another man. They had given her to another man. So now David had now become king, you see, 
Yes, he had become king. And upon him becoming king, what happened? He said, go and get me my wife, Mika. Do you see that? So it was until he entered. So when he had the woman, yes, Saul gave the woman to him. He was not yet in purpose. Now, when eventually he came into purpose, what happened? Let's read it together. The Bible says, it says here in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3, it says in verse 11, Ishbosheth couldn't say another word in response to Abner because he was terrified of him. So Abner sent messengers to David at Hebron to ask him, who owns this land? Cut a deal with me and look, I will lend my hand in bringing all of Israel over to you. David replied, sounds good to me. I will cut a deal with you under one condition. You are not to show yourself in my presence unless you bring Saul's daughter with you when you come to see me. Then David sent a delegation to Saul's son, Ishbosheth, to what? To give. So you can see, he sent a son, Ishbosheth, to say, Give me my wife, Michal, to whom I was engaged with a dowry of 1,000 Philistine foreskins. So Ishbosheth ordered that she be taken away from her husband, Laish's son, Paltiel. Her husband accompanied her, crying as he followed her all the way towards Behurim, where Abner told him, leave and go back. So he went back. Now, I want you to understand this in itself. I'm going to explain this mystery for you. Because a lot of times, when the Lord is preparing us for kingdom marriages, a lot of you sometimes always believe, I am ready to be married. I am ready to be married. But when the Father begins to take you through the process of this in itself, you realize that no, actually, you are not ready. Because there are things that is trying to what? It's trying to get out of you. Yes, there are things that is trying to get out of you. Now, so the reason why sometimes the Lord can basically hide your spouse with the person that they are with is because at that moment in time, the Lord is using them being there to refine you and bring you into your own purpose. Do you see that? So now look at it. You're seeing the person there. Now you've begun to pray. You've begun to worship. Now first, your whole motive was about the marriage. Now can you see? As you begin to walk in the dimension of the Father, the motive now is being refined. How is it being refined? Now, as you begin to walk with the Lord, you're reading the Word, you're worshiping, focusing, seeking first the kingdom of God. Now, the focus is no longer on the marriage. It's now on your relationship with the Father. Do you see that? So now you can continue to see at the same time too, why the Lord will put the person there. Now, as the Lord is reconciling you, into your purpose. Can you see the beauty of it? Your healing is taking place. So as you're waiting on the Lord, Father, when is it going to be? The Father is healing you. The Father is restoring you. The Lord is reconciling you. And as he is doing all of this in itself, can you see? He's refining your motive to completely come in alignment with the purpose of what he has called you to do right from the very beginning. Can I help us to understand something ever so beautifully? Kingdom marriages, they are, there are two types of marriage in the Bible. Yeah, you know, there is just one orchestrated by God. But in the realm that we have in, we're in, there are two types. Can I explain to you the two types? The first is marriage with no purpose. And the second is marriage with a purpose. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? So a marriage with no purpose is basically you you're getting married for the sake of everybody else is getting married. You find that person, you love that person, you find, oh, he has a job, oh, he has a car, oh, he's financially well, oh, he's got, you know, he makes sense. Let me settle with this one. So because of love, you settled in that marriage. Do you see that? So because of love, you went into that marriage and you settled there. That is the first dimension of marriage. Now, the true marriage that God has ordained right from the very beginning in Genesis, yes, is the kingdom marriage. Now, the kingdom marriage is a process, right? So, before you enter into a kingdom marriage, the father has to bring you to a place where when you get into that marriage, there are no triggers. No, you are healed. You are whole. You are restored. Because you have to understand that what? You are not going into that marriage to find love. You are not going into that marriage to find joy. You are not going into that marriage to find anything. You're going into that marriage bringing into. 
<laughs> Can I explain this to you in context? Yeah. Think about it. You have a house. Let us honor wisdom for a minute. She's beautiful wisdom. So wisdom has built a house. That is the house they have given you. When you moved into the house, was there anything in it? No, not at all. So you bought the house. It was empty. Now what happens? You have to now go and start bringing your furnitures, the utensils, everything you need to make that house complete. You're bringing it in. Do you see that? So the marriage has already been established. The house has already been established. You are the one bringing into. So you can see the man is bringing love. The man is bringing joy. The woman is bringing love. The man is bringing joy. And when you bring it all into it, then there is a fullness. Because if you're waiting to be happy in a marriage, no. If, if you're basically thinking, I will find love in it, I will find joy in it, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Those things, when you bring it into it and you come together, then there is a fullness of it. Do you see that? So that is why the Father can allow you, yes, before you get into it, to know how to love, to know how to be joyful, to know how to walk in peace, to know how to walk without offense, to know how to walk without being, uh, you know, without, you know, getting, you know, in your anger, do not sin, you know, not basically holding uh, grudges against one another. Can you see that? So he's purifying and refining, restoring and manifesting, bringing about a wholeness so that the fullness of you, when you come into that marriage, you're pouring out. And as you're pouring out, the other person person is refreshing you by what they have. As they are pouring out, you are refreshing them by what is already inside of you. Because by the time you get into that marriage, yes, thinking you're going to find all of those things pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Can you see? So you've poured everything out in that marriage. You're only going to be exhausted by the time you get in it. And that is why a lot of people, the wine finished. And because they cannot find anywhere else to basically manifest a new wine in that marriage, they start seeking for divorce. Because they start looking at other women as options. So majority or other men, basically. So majority of the time, the father can hide, yes, your spouse in another relationship. Yep, you be there for now. And the reason why sometimes the Lord does that, number two, hiding them. So number one, I was helping to understand purpose. Number two, to hide. And the reason why I said hide them is because while the father has them hidden. Can I show you an example in the Bible? The father basically wrote in his word that David was running from Saul and eventually he went and hid, yes, himself in Ziklag. So you can see in Ziklag, he was doing some things here, doing some things there. That is why we get to the scripture that David encouraged himself in the Lord because he was hiding in the midst of the enemy. So the father can hide that person in there for a minute. Yes, so that eventually what happened? You are able to continue in what God has called you to do. You can see, because we see it in the story of Michal was with another man. David was busy running from Saul. The Bible tells us in 2 King, in 2 Samuel chapter 1, David eventually came to the throne because Saul died. And as Saul died, look at what he said, get me my wife, the one whom I paid a dowry of four skins for. So they went and got who? Michal and brought him back to David. So think about it. What if Michal, because when David ran away from Saul, he had to leave Michal in the house of Saul. So for somehow, some way, whatever reason, Michal ended up in another man's house. Do you see that? And David was running for his life. So you can see that sometimes when you're basically doing what God has called you to do, that spouse can actually be a distraction to you. Yes, because they might be demanding things that you're not even able to provide. Have you ever seen where God is basically telling you, I need you to enter into your purpose because I want to bless you. But then you have a, a, a spouse who is basically demanding for this, demanding for attention, demanding for love, demanding, and the Lord is like, I, I need you in this minute because I'm trying to prepare you for where you're going. So because he's trying to prepare you, can you see that dimension? He will hide that person there. So a lot of times we have slandered, we have mocked, we have accused counterfeit. Not understanding the will of God was to hide your spouse in the midst of the counterfeit. 
I don't call them counterfeit, but I'll just call them someone else. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> that word, that word, you know, the father is beautiful. <laughs> the father, there is no counterfeit in the father. Yes. Is it that they are not or they are <laughs> one of the two? So you can see because in the process of it, now look at it. I want you to understand it as God is hiding them there. It's a place where the father is calling you higher into what he has called you to walk in. So as he's calling you higher, then eventually, the Bible says, let the wheat and the tear, let them grow together. And at the time of harvest, there will be a separation. So what does that mean? At the time of harvest, there will be a separation. So that means when it is time, when the appointed time has come, the father will begin to re hmm. he will begin to separate your spouse away from that person. So it could be whether the person went into that relationship of their own accord. Maybe witchcraft was happening there. Spells was happening there. All of those things. But the father eventually, can you see, will bring either someone or will get you to rise up and gradually begin to break those things and eventually reconcile you with the person. Do you see that? But at that moment in time, you would have entered like David into your purpose. So it's about purpose because all of this is highlighted because of purpose. So majority of us, that's why I was saying there are two types of marriages. The first one, you're entering it because you love the person. The second is about purpose. And I want to explain that purpose because a lot of people might be like, hey, he hasn't explained the purpose yet. What does that mean? Now, God formed Adam. Adam was in the garden. The Lord looked at Adam and said, it is not good. So you can see why a lot of people just choose marriage because God hasn't said it is not good. They are the ones who have said it because of their community, because of their family, because of all that is happening around them. So they themselves saw that it was not good for them to be alone. But when God himself says it is not good for you to be alone, this is where he brings the person to you. So you can begin to understand it. As he brings the person to you, you begin to nurture that person. You begin to wash the person with the word. You begin to, this is where you're basically, you know, as the Lord is leading you. Because as the head, a man, you begin to what? You begin to encourage the woman. You're, you're releasing words to the woman. You're basically bringing her higher. Because for what that, whatever that person needs, because you are the head of the house, the father can begin to what? Reveal secrets to you that maybe you have to come in what? in con connection with your spouse with, to pray together concerning some situations, to sing together concerning some situations, to believe together because the Bible says where two or three are, where I am there. Whatever two of you agree upon, that I will manifest. So you can begin to see it, why the Father will bring that person because you have gone by yourself long enough. In the garden, a help meet. So Eve was basically formed to help Adam. Can you see that? The same thing with Esther and who? And the king in Esther chapter 2. Now you can see that dimension. How would you think Esther was feeling when there were many women around? And all these women, they were going to the king. And Esther is like, hey, you know, <laughs> because for some women out there, like my, my, my kingdom spouse, all these women are just going in and out. Ah, something must be done. <laughs> you see? But Esther was basically there preparing herself. She was not focused on who is going to the king and who is not. The Lord, you know, Mordecai had already positioned her inside of what? Inside of the palace. Because why? There was a purpose to Esther being there. So you can see, because the marriage was about to be of a purpose. So the father, yes, the uncle, positioned her there. She was not concerned about who was going in or coming out. She was more concerned about the preparation for where she's going to. So this is why I basically say that the Lord can allow your spouse to be with someone. And then it was for you to focus on what it is that you're doing. Do you see that dimension? So eventually what happens? It was now the turn of Esther to go before the king. Esther went in and that was it. She stayed in her place. Do you see? So when the situation arose where Haman was basically trying to manifest all manner of things, what eventually happened? She entered into the purpose. The purpose, the reason why she entered in was now manifest. Adam and Eve, a purpose. Esther and the king, a purpose. How about Ruth and Boaz? There is a purpose because you know why? Esther and Boaz was there walking past. Ruth came along. She was already in the field. So Esther in the field, Eve in the field, Ruth in the field, Boaz comes along, Adam wakes up, 
the king plays a crown. So you can begin to understand that all of this in these three dimensions is helping you to understand the preparation that is needed before you get into that marriage. So in the preparation, maybe for some of you, you have, you've been hurt in past relationships. So this marriage that you're coming into, you're basically like, this is my final place. You know, maybe I'm going to heal when I get into this marriage. And the Lord is like, nah, not at all. Because your behavior can actually hurt the other person. So I'm not going to allow you to go in there. No, not yet. Because you know why? I need to get this behavior out. I need to get the hurts out. I need to get the triggers of those hurts. I need to get them out. So when I get them out and I'm satisfied with how you are basically being obedient to what I am doing through you, then I will allow that person to wake up and then eventually bring, yes, the requests. Would you marry me? Do you see that? That's why you can see. It's not busy. So to, if, if you know, it's not that scripture that says he that finds a wife that finds a good thing. You know, that is not the first scripture that guides any man to basically get married. No, nope, that is not the first scripture. That is the second scripture. The first scripture that guides you looking for a spouse is it is not good for a man to be alone. Then when God presents that man or that woman to you, then the scripture comes. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. Because that is what the Father will reveal to you. This is your wife. This is your husband. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? But before then, he's working things out in you to get to your purpose. He's working things out in you. He's healing. He's getting things out in you. He's restoring. He's getting things out in you. He's reconciling. He's getting things out in you to manifest what he has ordained for you right from the very beginning. So you can see, because that person within that other relationship, it is actually to hide that person there. Amen? To hide them. So they can be involved in immorality and all of those things. That is not the will of God. Immorality is not the will of God whatsoever. Because some people, they can be in a relationship, right? No immorality involved and they think it's their kingdom spouse and they're there and God will basically allow it. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? It is not the will of God. I keep repeating that for anybody to be committing sexual immorality. No, this is not, this is not that message. Not at all. But I'm explaining about some people. That, that is my kingdom them spouse i believe so maybe they've not even inquired of the lord if that person is or if they're not but they're just waiting yep maybe god said maybe god said you know i like that man and i'm there but actually it's not the will of the father so that is another dimension for you to understand why god can place somebody with another person has god really told you that that person is yours do you see that dimension? Has God really told you? Or is it you just trying to envisage, oh, that person is for me. That person, I know, I know because you know what? We, you know, we, I, I can see, you know, they tick all the flags. They, they, all the flags are green. All the flags are blue. All the flags are yellow. And God is like, are you, are you serious right about now? So you are ticking off the boxes. But have I ticked them for you? So you are basically qualifying what I have not yet qualified. Do you see the purpose of it? So this is why the father has to help you to understand. I have not called that person. Yes. So why are you trying to wait on something that does not belong to you? Because a lot of people, this is where they can be at sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, I know. I know because, you know, God, you know, the same thing, the same. This is, this is, you know, everything I ask God for. This is what it is. Yeah. You might ask God for it. But is that the person who all of that thing is actually for? <laughs> Do you see that in itself? Because there are 7 billion people on this planet and every one of them can have similarities. But who is the appointed one? Everybody can tick that box. Yeah, if you put 5,000 people together, they can tick that box. But are they the one? <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Are they the one? So this is the very manifestation of what the Father has been trying to what? Has been trying to get you to walk in. So you can see purpose. You can see at the same time, God is using it to hide that person and using it to restore because I remember someone with me, you know, a while back and I was explaining to that person and I was saying, you know, God is trying to get you, 
Yes, I want God wants to teach you. He wants to, you know, it was a place where the father was saying, I need you to reach out to this person. Yes, Lord. I basically reached out. What do I say, Father? He said, I need you to tell them. I want to help them to learn how to teach because the Bible tells, tells us in the book of James, not everybody is allowed to teach. But the Father was calling that person as an invitation that I have called this person to you and I need you to stay with him and allow him to teach you the word of God. And that is what Ephesians chapter 5 declares, the washing of the word to present the woman to Christ holy and blameless. So the father was helping to understand the reason why I have assigned you to that person so that he can teach you that while he's teaching you, healing is breaking out. While he's teaching you, both of you are getting to know one another. While he's teaching you, I am restoring you. While he's teaching you, all of these things is manifesting through to bring about healing and acceleration to what I've called you to do. But you know why? What happened? They rejected it. Do you see that? They rejected it. So you can begin to understand because they did, you know, they didn't, whether they went and inquired of the Lord or not, to God be the glory. But the Father was helping to understand that it was at that moment in time he wanted to accelerate things to bring it together. But they rejected it. This is why I always encourage a lot of people that, hey, when somebody rejects you, you have to understand that as long as you're doing the will of God, it is not you that they are rejecting. It is the will of God. Because sometimes... When somebody, God has said to you, that person is your kingdom spouse and eventually they don't want to do the will of God, you can, you can see because the father helps you to understand that there is what? There is no delay in him. That is why sometimes Vashti has to be moved on. So you can see because Adam gave Eve instructions. Eve still went to listen to Satan. <laughs> do you see that? Because she was quoting exactly the same thing God said to Adam. She was quoting it to Satan, but yet she still disobeyed instructions. Do you see that? So there is always a likelihood. Vashti come before the king. Vashti refused to come before the king. And do you know what happened? He said, let there be a replacement. And you know what happened? They brought the one who would basically walk in the purpose that Vashti did not walk in. So sometimes the Lord can basically allow... So this is another fourth dimension so you can understand. So the Lord can basically bring somebody, right? And say, this is the person. Yes, and I'm giving this person an opportunity. So you can see that dimension. God has said, yep, I'm giving this person an opportunity. The Lord presents that person to you. But you have to understand that when that person, yes, refuse to walk in what God has called them to walk in, they can eventually be moved on. Because the Lord already knows the end from the beginning, but he gives everyone opportunities. Can I give you a scripture? Yeah. Because you have to understand, for the Lord, so, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, they're about. It says, 3 to 5, thank you, Holy Ghost. In the message translation, it says, God puts us through battery of tests. So God can basically put people to the test. Yes, he can. And he will help them to see. So God already knows whether they will pass it or not. But he's helping them to see, yes, where they fall short so that he can bring them higher. And this is what he says, I believe in the book of Jeremiah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us are quite acquainted with this scripture in itself. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 21, it says, Therefore, thus said the Lord, behold. So it is the Lord who is actually speaking this. He says, I will lay stumbling blocks before these people and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbors and his friends shall perish. Yes, so no one is perishing here. I'm just reading a scripture. I bless you all with life. But I want you to understand the concept of exactly the question why you're asking that. Let's go also to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 so that you can understand what Jeremiah and the Lord was speaking there. In Jeremiah, in, sorry, 1 Peter chapter 2, this is what the Bible declares. It says, now to you, let's start from verse 6. It says here, for in the scripture it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and a precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And it goes on in verse 8, a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. It says they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. 
So while some of you, you are basically in a place where you're single and your spouse is in another relationship, the father can get you to begin to give your spouse a word. Maybe both of you, you know, you've said hello to one another, but they are still in a relationship, right? So the father can get you and say, now begin to release this word over to them. Speak this word over to them. Let them know that is not their spouse. Let them know this is what I will for them. Let them know these are the instructions I need them to follow. So the Lord has been using you. So for that reason, some of them, they've made up their mind. They are not going to do that in which you're doing. Can you see? So that in itself, because the realm of First Peter chapter two verse eight, that they say now you have you are now a stumbling block. Uh, how is it that you're a stumbling block? Because Jesus Himself walked in this dimension. Remember, in the book of Luke chapter four, Jesus went into the temple, in the synagogue that is, and He said to them, He said there are many widows in in what in Israel, but God did not send any. Yes, He did not send Elijah to any of them except to the woman in Zarephath. He said there were many lepers in Israel, but Naaman was the only one who come to, came to Elisha. Now, what did they do? The Bible says they picked up stones and they escorted Jesus to the edge of the cliff to throw him down. So this is the realm where you begin to understand a stumbling block because they refuse to they refuse to obey the message. So this is where you begin to understand that sometimes the person that God brought to you can disobey the message in which you're giving them. And God will keep warning them. God will keep warning them. God will keep speaking to them. God will keep telling them. And they are the ones that God has ordained for you. And God will keep telling. God will keep speaking. But they keep refusing. And for that reason, can you see? The Bible tells us in the book of what? Jeremiah. If a lot of you are quite accustomed to that book. It says every single time Jeremiah kept telling them the same message. The same message. The same message. Sometimes they will pray for confirmation. And God will send you back again to go and tell them. This is what I'm still speaking. So they might be looking for confirmation elsewhere. But the father is saying, no, I'm still sending the same person. I'm not going to send one or two other people to confirm. I am sending the same person to you to confirm the word. We see it in the Bible. Jesus kept going about in the same dimension, speaking the same word as we see him in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Apostle Paul did the same thing. Let us go back to these churches. Let us go and see how well they're doing. So he was speaking the same message again and again. So for some of you, the Lord will keep using you to speak to your spouse, but yet they refuse the message. It says they stumbled because they disobeyed the message, which is also do you see why I said the Lord knows the end from the beginning? He said what they were destined for. So they were destined, yes, for that. But the Lord granted them grace and mercy for them to at least obey. He gave them opportunities. Just in the same place, in the same way you have opportunities at work, you have opportunities, you know, at home, you have opportunities in relationships, you have opportunities in all of those things. God gave them opportunities too. Do you see that? And when they refused, just like in Vashti, Vashti was given an opportunity. The king said, this woman is beautiful. I want to show her off to everybody. Vashti, please come forward. She was given an opportunity, but Vashti decided to do her own thing. And that was it. Vashti was never heard of again. So you can see why I said the father can bring one person and when they reject, because that in itself was the original purpose of God for you, but it was not your fault. It was theirs. So that's why the father has called you pure and has called you blameless. So because they rejected the message, the Lord moves them on. And then there is a replacement that happens and the replacement God gives you, eventually you begin to see that that person, they are obeying every instruction that you're given. They are surrendered, they are submitted, they are obedient, and you're wondering, Father, why did I have to go through that in itself, you know, when I, when you could have given me this right from the very beginning? And the Lord is helping you to understand the reason why I did that in itself right from the very beginning. Because can you see, while you were giving that person the message, they were rejecting it. Can you see how you are able to now walk in boldness? Can you see how you're healing from rejection? Can you see how you're healing from disobedience? Can you see how you're healing because you continue to love that person, you continue to pray for that person, you continue to be there for that person, you're not praying that, Father, let them leave that relationship. No, you're praying that my will be done in their lives. Even while they were yet disobedient, you continue to pray, Father, have mercy. Father, love these people. 
and have mercy for your love have mercy because in that in itself you can see that when the father now brought the person that was replacing you can see how healed you have become that happened in Esther chapter 2 because the king was angry in Esther chapter 1. But look at how pleased he was in Esther chapter 2. Now you can see how pleased that king became because every time Esther approached the king, because you can see Esther fasted and said, hey, you know, I'm going to go and approach this king because anybody who approaches this king, something may happen to them. But the king extended his scepter and Esther approached and Esther was like, hey, this is what Haman is, you're, what? Haman is trying to do that to you. Look at how the king began to back that woman up. Yeah, you can do this. Let, I'm going to write and eat it. So you can see how the father eventually, because now you are whole, now you're restored. Now the father can bring that replacement and now you are loving that person from a place of purity, no longer from a place of hurt, no longer from a place of rejection, no longer from a place where, you know, all of these things manifested right from the very beginning amen so you might be looking like it's your spouse it's your spouse no it has never been them from the very beginning it has been about you it has always been about you because before you can go into that marriage the father has to first get you completely healed and whole but for them the father gave them an opportunity because he was saying i'm giving you my best that is why i brought this woman this is my best for you but sometimes like i said a lot of people can reject the best of god so this is what the Lord is wanting you to understand, that it is not, yes, this is what the Father is trying to reconcile with you to help you to understand that it has never been about that person. It was about you. Now look at it. If I bring that person to you, now look at, look at the love that is going to be flowing out of you. Look at the joy that is going to be manifesting in you. Look at all the essence you are now pouring out. And the person that God, you know, God is bringing, they too, they are now being refreshed in your presence. That they now become the refreshing. So even when you are like, Father, I can't do this anymore. They are there for you. They are, you know, they are not there just because, you know, they want to gain something from you. They are there there because they love you completely in purity and blameless. So a lot of times we have slandered counterfeits. We have slandered when they are with somebody else, not knowing that God was actually using that somebody else to basically bring restoration to you. Do you see that? That was why I believe I shared my own testimony. And I was helping a lot of us to understand that when you're healing, you have to understand why in the context of it. And I, I you know, I'm bent, you know, just bent, just in the, in the, in the dimension of uh, uh, purity and openness, because the person, the father, the person I made a mistake and went with in times past, the father was showing because I had to learn love in the midst of wickedness. I learned how to love in the midst of wickedness. And in this dimension, I had to learn love out of what? Out of learn to love people because at first I didn't get it right. I was not able to love people who were disobedient to the message <laughs> until the Lord began to show me mercy. He said, Lord, you, you two, you were once like that. I'm like, yes, Lord. I was exactly once like that. And now, can you see that? The Father was helping me to show mercy and to love and to show mercy and to love and to show mercy. Now, when they get moved on, can you see that dimension? it's like father thank you i bless that person every animal with that person i bless them i bless their home i bless their family wherever they are father just have mercy over their lives the mercy of god so now you've come into a complete healing that now love the father has restored love as the foundation now you're overflowing with love now you can take that love and place it in what the father is giving you now you've entered into your purpose. Now the person cannot be a distraction because the person the Lord is giving you can now enter into, can you see, the very purpose that God has called you to walk in. So now you can see, they are now supportive of your purpose. They are now supportive of what God is calling you to do. And you too, you have been supportive of what God has called them to do. So you are no longer settling. Amen? So this is the will of the Father for majority of us. So you don't basically slander. So Father, we repent when we've slandered counterfeits and we call them counterfeits. No, God placed them there for a reason. 
And it was to use them to get you into purpose. That after you get into purpose, then he releases. At the time of harvest, there is a release. And when that release happens, they come to join you. That's why the Bible says in the a book of Amos chapter 9, verse 11, I believe 13 to 15, it says that what? I will once again restore the tabernacles of David which has fallen. So there were things that had fallen in your life before you came into this dimension. So when the Lord showed you that person, immediately, can you see? Now, before, maybe you were you, you were the type, you were always praying for yourself. But now, look at it, you're always praying for that person, blessing that person. It was all about that person. And Father, the Lord, so some of you, it's like, I want to give up, Father. I can't do this anymore. And the Lord says, keep going. Because you know what? He's actually strengthening you. He's strengthening you for your purpose. It's strengthening you because a lot of when he finally gives you that person, you know, you're not there. Ah, you know, look at what he's doing. No, the first thing you do is you run to the father. This person is behaving this way. I don't understand it, Lord. Help me to help me to get it. And the father begins to now begin to pray for him, begin to pray for her, begin to pray for him, begin to pray for her, begin to pray for him, begin to pray for her. Can you see that? Because at first it can be one person delaying the other and this is what i always encourage i believe i shared a, a, a testimony here and i was helping to understand that one person can actually delay that's why i talked about what he causes people to stumble and the rock that makes them fall they stumble so in their being in their stumbling if they don't get up and being obedient to the father they can delay the other person spouses can delay one another do you know that because there is a timing ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 there is a timing in the spirit and in the time in the spirit, if you don't enter into that time, only the Lord knows. Maybe that time can come back again in one week. It can come back again in two weeks. It can come back again in one month, in a year, in two years, seven years. Depends on the mercy of God and how much that person is willing and surrendered to the purpose of God. Do you see that? So until then, continue to love them. Continue to love them, love them, pray for them, love them, pray for them, love them, pray for them. Continue to pray, continue to pray, continue to pray for them, love them. And the Father, as He's encouraging you, yes, Father, what kind of prayer can I pray for them? He shows you the prayer. Hey, I need you to pray this. I need you to pray that. You're blessing them. And while you're looking on, Father, but they are still with somebody else, the Father says, I know, but keep going. Because you have to understand that sometimes God uses these things as training grounds to strengthen you in the spirit because of the purpose of your assignment so because of the level of your assignment that is so great the father can say hey i need you to stay there because you know why eventually you know you will see how it all comes back in in fullness so that person that you pray for you brought them out of it eventually look at how the father begins to work in them and now they are now being reconciled he that endureth till the end shall be saved Amen. So for your question, why would the Lord allow the person to be there? I talked about it. It's for you to enter into your purpose. For you at the same time. Can you see that? Because I want to help you to understand. Because there is, I'm going to use the principle of this word for you to understand that at the time of harvest. Because you can see there is a dimension in the book, in the Bible, where David was what? With Abigail. I'm sure a lot of us have read the story of David and Abigail. So what happened with David and Abigail? Can you see? David went to a, a Laban, a Lab, a, not Laban, he went to Nabal's house. Hey, give me this. And Nabal said, who do you think you are? And insulting David. Now look at who went to meet David. Can you see that introduction? Because if you read the Bible from the very beginning of that, of that chapter, you will see how, you know, Abigail was introduced. <laughs> Do you see that? Abigail was introduced. Yep, Abigail. She was introduced in 1 Samuel chapter 25. They basically described, oh, Nebal. They described Nebal. Then they described Abigail, that she was intelligent. Why did the Bible, why do you think the Bible basically described Nebal? Then described how Abigail was. And eventually, he allowed, can you see? <laughs> to God be the glory. I didn't even see it this way, but I'm going to share the vision, the revelation with you. Can you see that? He put a stumbling block before Nabal. There was a stumbling block that was placed because David said, go, he said, go and meet Nabal. We looked after your sheep. We said, give us this, give us that. But you know what? Nabal said, who is this man? Where, where is this runaway person coming from? He put a stumbling block before Nabal. 
And what about, because the Bible says it was what they were destined for. And it happened with David. And now you can see the stumbling block happened with who? With Nabal. And when it happened, what happened to Nabal? He died. And when he died, what happened? There was a release. To God be the glory. There was a release. <laughs> Can you see that release? Yeah. So Abigail was released. And David said, go and get me Abigail. <laughs> Do you see the dimension? This is why I said sometimes the father will position you with somebody who is already in a relationship and eventually put a stumbling block before that person. Yes, and that stumbling block will bring them to an end. Yes, or for sometimes it will basically separate them from them. And eventually what happens? Then you're reconciled with your spouse. Do you see that? So you can see that the woman is already submissive. She's already prepared. She's already ready. The same thing with the man. The man is already ready. He's prepared. He's already single. He's already positioned. But there is what? Something that is standing in the way. The stumbling block, the father places. They refuse because this was what they were destined for. And eventually they release. And Abigail came. Because as you can read in the last verse, the Bible declares that what? It says David sent word to Abigail asking her to become his wife. So eventually when the stumbling block is removed, then the father gives you the permission to approach the woman or to approach the man, whichever dimension. Do you see that? So this is what the father, so it's about purpose. <laughs> Do you see the beauty of it? It was about purpose. It's about purpose because David, can you see how David had been positioned? He was already in the wilderness taking care of what was going to eventually belong to <laughs> do you see what I said? With that person, you're already washing them with the word. You're already reconciling them to God. You're doing all of these things. You're manifesting. So David had been taking care of the sheep in the wilderness. Then he came positioned. Yes, to where Nebal is. We're hungry. Please give us food. Nebal began to insult David. And eventually, Abigail heard it. Abigail went and intervened. He said, please, don't allow vengeance. Don't take it on your own. Allow God to do the work. And what happened? He said, Nabal realized and he slumped and died. And what happened? He said, go and get me Abigail to become my wife. Do you see the beauty of it? Amen? <laughs> so this is where you begin to understand the purpose of the word of God. And this is why the Father can get you he will allow somebody else to be there in the meantime so that you can focus on your heavenly assignment. Amen? So when the time is set, there will be a separation. And when that separation happens, then there will be a reconciliation. Amen? I love you all so very much. I hope this answered your prayer. And I bless the Lord for each and every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. You are the glory of Zion. You are the blessedness of the Father. And I honor each and every one of you. I love you. Stay blessed because you are his blessing. Hallelujah. Amen.